There are telescopes searching the skies for signals, for hints, for a sign of civilizations, or even the signals from starships moving through the sky, you know, whatever it is. From close neighboring stellar constellations within our Milky Way to the far-reaching depths of the cosmos, strange signals have been popping up on our radar. Now, a new giant object in deep space is sending signals to Earth. The signal is so unique, strange, that astronomers suspect it's from aliens or extraterrestrials. Even Elon Musk has voiced his concerns and given his viable insight on the issue. What sort of signal have astronomers picked up, and from where exactly? Why are they so convinced that this signal is proof of alien life? Join us in this video as NASA warns that a huge object in space has started sending Earth radio messages. One of NASA's core missions is to find proof of extraterrestrial life. This is why over the years, the agency has set up several programs to seek out alien life forms in the cosmos. Programs like the Exoplanet Exploration Program, Astrobiology Studies, and the current UAP investigations are all means to achieving this goal. But beyond that, NASA, in partnership with several other agencies and world governments, is also investing in instruments like telescopes and alert systems to help detect the presence of any alien life forms in space. Through one of such radio telescopes, astronomers picked up a disturbing signal from a nearby neighbor, the Proxima Centauri star system. The signal from Proxima Centauri was supposed to have been kept a secret, but somehow the information leaked to the public. Initially, it was hard to believe the same Proxima star we had all known could put up such show. The Proxima Centauri is the closest star to our Sun at a distance of 4.2 light years away. It is, however, much smaller and invisible to the naked eye. The star was first spotted back in 1915 by Robert Inner. Till today, it can only be spotted through a telescope. Scientists call this star a flare star because it releases violent solar flares, just like our Sun. One unique thing about this star is that it can't be seen from Earth with the naked eye because of its dimness. You can only see it using a telescope. A team of scientists had been working with the Syro Parks Radio Telescope in Australia to observe Proxima Centauri for any flares or unexpected activities. Since Proxima Centauri is an old star, things like these may occur and scientists wanted to stay on top of it. It was while carrying out this observation they stumbled upon the distinct signal. The signal from the Proxima Centauri had a unique techno signature. NASA was able to identify this signal, all thanks to a $100 million project called Breakthrough Listen. Breakthrough Listen started in 2015 as led by Andrew Siemian. Siemian, a scientist from the University of California, Berkeley, studied the detected signal and found some strange properties that made it quite mysterious. This signal had a very narrow radio spectrum band, 982 megahertz. Just so you know, this spectrum band has nothing to do with human transmissions because our current satellites and tools cannot compress electromagnetic signals into frequencies like these. Breakthrough Listen Project is aimed at finding proof of any extraterrestrial life out there by observing radio telescopes worldwide for any strange signals picked from the skies. Several tech billionaires have invested money in this project, including Yuri Milner. Thanks to multi-billion dollar investments, the Breakthrough Listen Project employs several state-of-the-art facilities across the planet, making it the most comprehensive search program for extraterrestrial life forms. This Proxima Centauri signal was picked by the Syro Parks Radio Telescope in New South Wales, Australia. The telescope had been observing a space region surrounding the Proxima star system and collected vast amounts of data, including the hidden signal from Proxima. You see, when radio telescopes are used this way, they pick up all kinds of signals from all sources. Sometimes signals come from Earth, space, or other telescopes. This is why astronomers in charge of these observatories always filter out data after each observation cycle. The same thing happened here. Scientists in charge of this telescope had to filter through about 4 million signals to find the ones specifically sent from outer space. In case you're wondering how they get to know such signals, it's simple. All these scientists have to do is look out for two things, the broadband and the frequency. Space signals have narrow broadband similar to that of radio broadcast stations. 
Aside from that, they also have a peculiar property of their frequencies drifting in a way similar to how exoplanets drift relative to Earth. At the end of the filter process, these scientists were left with 5,000 distinct signals. After running some cross-checks, they narrowed it down to one techno signal with very narrow broadband. They noticed that the signal only appeared when the telescope was pointed toward Proxima Centauri. In a way, discovering signals like these can be pretty exciting. An astronomer at Penn State University named Jason Wright commented on this matter. According to him, if you see such signals and they aren't coming from the surface of the Earth, then you've just found extraterrestrial technology. Finding such signals coming from a mega-sized star system in space like the Proxima is both intriguing and fascinating. Scientists are curious that the signals may have come from extraterrestrials on Proxima. You may be wondering how aliens could survive on Proxima, seeing how it is a star like our Sun with crazy high temperatures and radiation that could melt you from the inside out. Well, scientists aren't thinking these beings are inhabiting the star itself, but the planets orbiting it. The Proxima Centauri star system holds about three planets, Centauri B, C, and D. The first one, Proxima Centauri B, was discovered in 2016. It's bigger than our planet and moves in an 11-day orbit around its star. It orbits the star at a distance of about 7.5 million kilometers. This planet is also located in Proxima's habitual zone, so there's a high possibility of finding liquid water on the planet's surface. Another of Proxima's planets, Proxima C, was discovered in 2019. This planet orbits in a time frame of about five years and at a distance of about 220 million kilometers. However, it is not in a very habitual zone as Proxima B Centauri D is still under debate due to its weird size and property. Some scientists argue that this object isn't worth being called one of the planets in the Proxima Centauri system. It measures only one quarter of the Earth's mass and orbits every five days at 4.3 million kilometers. Scientists believe that this signal they picked from the Proxima system may originate from Centauri B since it's more inhabitable than C. Proxima Centauri B receives at least 10, minus 50 times as much radiation on its surface as we receive here on Earth. The high radiation levels there could increase atmospheric oxygen and carbon monoxide levels. This environment may seem harmful to humans, but it can actually be very helpful to the evolution of complex organisms or organic life. Some scientists even believe that Proxima Centauri B has an entire surface filled with biological life or extraterrestrials and that these guys were responsible for the recent signal from the Proxima star system. Some scientists believe that mankind has never heard any signal as exciting or as unique as this before, not even on the Breakthrough Listen project. The team investigating this signal has named it BLC-1, meaning it's the first notable discovery in the Breakthrough series. Since the BLC-1, the scientists in charge of this project have been pointing and nodding at the Proxima system. Pointing and nodding is a term used to describe when a telescope is solely positioned at a target, and then the face is repositioned to face somewhere else close to the target but not exactly the actual target. Simply put, it means tilting the mirrors to increase the signal or the acquired image. So far, nodding hasn't picked up strange signals like the BLC-1, this further proves that the BLC-1 wasn't some random event in space, nor was it caused by any human interference. And so the team decided to investigate the BLC-1 signal even further to find out what it meant, or if it was a secret message from extraterrestrials. After months of intense investigations, some scientists thought the BLC-1 would pass off as another scientific error. But at the end of the day, the results pointed to one thing, the scientists were right. This was, in fact, a unique signal from space. However, scientists face the problem of decoding this strange Proxima signal. The signal doesn't possess any modulations or tweaks that scientists can work on to see any hidden information locked inside. It's simply composed of one note and tone, with no extra features for analysis. But they did notice that the signal was drifting or changing in frequency. Scientists have ruled that this could be an after-effect or be due to the movement of the planet it originated from or its direct extraterrestrial source. But here's the thing. Ideally, the BLC-1 should be reducing in frequency. At least, that's what the scientists in charge of this project believe. But rather than go down, the frequency is growing. Currently, scientists are desperate to pick up a repeat signal to conduct follow-up observations and investigations. 
Such a repeat signal will also get them to confirm whether this is truly a techno signal. In essence, techno signals or techno signatures are exclusive to BioLife. In other words, these signals indicate the presence of either intelligent or unintelligent life forms. One of the closest things we've ever had to the BLC-1 is the WOW signal. This was back in 1977 when Ohio State's Big Ear Radio Telescope was the number one tool for searching for extraterrestrial life. The strange signal, later renamed the WOW signal, originated from the constellation Sagittarius. It lasted for about 72 seconds, and since then it has never been detected by any other telescope, and no other signal like it has been received anywhere else in the world. Although no one has been able to trace the actual source of this signal, a major part of the scientific community agrees that it was from an extraterrestrial civilization outside of our solar system. But the WOW signal isn't the only signal from outer space that has kept scientists on their toes. For some time now, scientists have detected weird signals coming from deep parts of the Milky Way. The signals are referred to as FRBs or fast radio bursts. Scientists had been receiving these signals from deep space beyond our galaxy, only to be surprised when the signals started coming from our galaxy. Could it be extraterrestrials? Did they travel across galaxies into the Milky Way to contact us? Well, anything is possible. FRBs were first observed in 2007 with the help of the Parkes Telescope. The signal was observed across a 288 MHz radio band and traced to come from a small cloud. However, given the limited equipment at the time, their deductions about this signal's source may have been wrong. Years later, when a student named Sarah Burks Bolero was observing pulsars for other radioactive bursts, she found something shocking. She found a replica of the fast radio burst discovered in 2007. By 2013, something even better happened when four additional bursts were discovered, sparking a new interest in FRBs. In 2014, another FRB was discovered at the Arecibo Observatory and was traced to somewhere around the galactic anti-center. However, no definite answer has come forth yet about its exact origin. One thing scientists always look out for with FRBs is the dispersion. Dispersion refers to how stretched out the signal is by the time it reaches Earth. Over the course of travel, the higher frequency bursts from FRBs usually get to Earth faster than the lower frequency bursts. This is the dispersion scientists observe. They try to use this dispersion to calculate how far away the FRB is. The more dispersed the signal is, the farther away the source must be. The recently discovered FRBs were intense and lasted only for about a millisecond. However, it was impossible to miss and enough to puzzle scientists. It's being discovered that the source of these FRBs is about 30,000 light years away from Earth. Just so you know, the FRBs were first detected by the Survey for Transient Astronomical Radio Mission 2. And interestingly, the instrument wasn't even looking for FRBs at the time. It just simply stumbled upon it. Scientists have tagged these FRBs as the Milky Way's most energetic radio blasts ever recorded. Thanks to its proximity and high intensity, we now have a better chance of studying FRBs than ever before. What used to be billions of light years away is now only 30,000 light years away. You see, ever since fast radio bursts were first discovered, scientists have longed to study them. FRBs were first discovered in 2007 by two men, Duncan Lorimer and David Narkovich. These men were studying data picked by the Shiro Parks radio dish in Australia. They found some dispersed bursts which had occurred on July 24, 2001, lasting about 5 milliseconds. The burst didn't seem associated with the Milky Way galaxy, and no other additional bursts like it were found in the data. This led to the conclusion that the burst was formed from a singular event like a supernova and was probably from extraterrestrials. It was named the Lorimer Burst. So far, astronomers have learned that FRBs are bright flashes of radio light that last for milliseconds or sometimes microseconds. Also, thousands of these bursts occur daily, with most of them originating billions of light years away. However, the origins of FRBs have always been a thing of contention. The fact that these bursts can be so powerful that they discharge such high energy in just a few seconds and travel billions of light years down to us is mind-blowing. Some experts say they originate from neutron stars. Neutron stars are residual products of supernovas. 
When supernovas explode, they sometimes leave behind ultra-dense, small space objects called neutron stars. These stars can be twice as dense as the Sun and weigh a billion tons. They spin at extremely high speeds and release electromagnetic radiation, like X-rays. Neutron stars that release this kind of radiation are known as pulsars. Aside from neutron stars, astronomers also suspect FRBs may be from white dwarfs or cosmic strings, but none of these has been proven to be true. Hopefully, now that the signal is much closer, astronomers can use their scientific instruments to work out the mystery. One instrument that has proven valuable toward this research is the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment, located at the Dominion Radio Astrophysical Laboratory in Canada. It is a first-rate telescope with high mapping speed, a 200-square-degree field view, and an ultra-wide frequency range. This tool, alongside several others, will help unravel the truth about this FRB detected from the Milky Way. So far, over 800 FRBs have been discovered, but only 19 have been traced back to their sources. For some of these FRBs, dispersion fails to reveal the distance to their origin. In one case, after astronomers had finished tracing the distance to 3 billion light years using dispersion, direct calculations showed that the fast radio burst originated from a distance of 30 billion light years away. This type of setback has made FRBs a burden to scientists. They can't trace their sources effectively or decode them. But aside from FRBs and the CLB-1, there's another phenomenon at play within our cosmos that has disturbed scientists and billionaire space experts like Elon Musk. It's the signals coming from a huge space object, a neutron star. Neutron stars, as we mentioned earlier, are a byproduct of supernovas. But scientists discovered this neutron star isn't what you'd expect. This particular star spins differently and emits infrared rays. More so, it's very large, measuring about 200 astronomical units across. No pulsar before now has been known to emit infrared light, and yet this one does so with such a strong signal. But that's not all. The real shocker was when scientists started receiving a strange radio message from this neutron star. The signals came on and off, lasting for a minute and going off for 18 minutes. Initially, astronomers were so perplexed that they did not know how to classify this signal. Now they call it a slow transient, since it's a signal from a neutron star. Researchers from the International Center for Radio Astronomy Research were responsible for discovering this radio wave, and it was spontaneous. You see, while observing our galaxy, these guys discovered an object that suddenly released a 60-second burst of brightness before disappearing. The object would reappear after about 20 minutes to repeat the process. At first, they thought it was a new kind of object or slow transient since it didn't follow the well-known pattern. Slow transients are signals that arrive slowly, stay visible for a few days, and then disappear for months. Fast transients, on the other hand, are very fast and flash on and off every few milliseconds. So far, this star has proven to be one of the most prominent radio emitters in space since it gives very strong radio emissions. Scientists in charge of this investigation say that this object some converts magnetic energy to radio waves, which it sends to Earth. But why is it doing this? Could it all be a coincidence? Or is someone out there trying to tell us something? Such energy conversion and transmission have never been recorded before, not in the history of space exploration. This is why time and resources are being poured into this space object. Scientists feel it's from a different origin, perhaps aliens. Could they be right? For a long time, we've been suspecting alien life to be found in ancient stars and globular clusters or other deep parts of the cosmos, and we've been hoping to see them with equipment like the James Webb and Hubble Space Telescope. But what if we've been looking in the wrong places all this while? And what if we never really needed James Webb to learn about aliens anyway, but just a good old radio receiver? We hope to find answers to these questions in the coming years, but for now, we just leave it to the experts at NASA and other space agencies like Elon Musk's SpaceX to do the digging. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.